Well, hello, this is episode 201. And today we're chatting about sailing. My life, (laughs) my life on a sailboat, a little update from me. Now, if my life bores you, just skip this episode instead of leaving a bad review for the show. If you like the show, definitely leave a review. I've been getting a lot of reviews from negative Nancy's that are like, Leanne, all she does is talk about her life. And I look at the episode that they're reviewing and it's like my life update. (laughs) Well, yeah, (laughs) totally. Because there are many of you that are just genuinely curious about what life is like on the ocean and exploring and the challenges that come up with this and all the life lessons I've learned. While embarking on more of a nomadic life. So if you're a negative Nancy that doesn't like hearing about other people's lives, then just skip today's episode, go to another keto episode, you'll have a great time. And if you really like listening to the show, whether it be a life update or a guest or a takeover or me just chatting into the mic about keto stuff, go ahead, leave it a review for the show. You can go to healthfulpursuit.com slash review or just go to your favorite player and leave a review. That would be amazing. Okay. If you have questions about today's content, you can go to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me. You can also catch up on previous podcast episodes and notes from today's show by going to keto diet podcast.com. Okay, let's do this thing. Hey, I'm Leanne Vogel, and you're listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. I've put together a free 21-page guide on achieving weight loss on your keto diet if nothing is working. Did you know imbalanced hormones are generally at the core of all struggles that women face when it comes to our weight? Grab your free guide at ketoforwomen.com to get the steps you need to overcome the hurdles standing in your way. Thanks so much for listening, and let's get started with the show. So today I wanted to chat with all of you about sailing. Now you might be like, Leanne, I have no interest to sail. And I will tell you, if you have an interest in living your life to your fullest, I highly recommend that you continue listening because living on a boat is one of the, is it the most challenging thing I've ever done? Perhaps top three, I would say, you know, overcoming an eating disorder, that was a pretty challenging thing. But I got to hide away from it for a while, whereas living in a sailboat, you can't really hide away from the fact that like you have a lot of stuff to deal with. So I'll just give you a little backstory. Early 2017, my husband Kevin and I decided to sell all of our things and move into an RV. And this wasn't a dream that we had had for very long. We had been RVing for about a year and a half, really loved it. We were in the market for a new RV. We ended up moving into a, well, we ended up buying a 40 foot motorhome with plans to just like maybe downsize and live in the RV. And then the downsizing slowly turned into let's sell our house, which turned into let's get rid of all of our stuff, which turned into, oh my gosh, we're living in this RV. And we lived in the RV for a year, but it was fun. It was great. Way less expensive than owning a boat. And we'll get to why that is and the life lessons I've learned up until this point. But living in the RV was simple. It was a great lesson in how to live more of a nomadic life, allowed us to see places that you don't, you wouldn't really see if you were just on a vacation, you know, you wouldn't fly to Fort Smith. Arkansas. Like that's not a place you would really fly to unless you know people there. But we drove through places like that and we got to understand different cultures throughout Canada and the US. And that was so, so important. And to learn that you don't need a mailbox and you function quite well. And most businesses will send your mail via email and you can set up a PO box where you can receive your mail. And like, that's no problem at all. So after living the RV life for um, a year, Kevin and I were in Destin, Florida. We were supposed to be in the Keys, but plans didn't pan out. Our RV was quite long at 40 feet, so there were a lot of places we couldn't get to, especially in the Keys. So we ended up in Destin, Florida, and Kevin and I were sitting on the beach after having spent the last year in various forests through Canada and the U.S., and we're sitting on the beach, and it was gorgeous. And I just looked at Kevin and asked, what do you like more, 
beaches in the ocean or trees in the mountains? And Kevin said, well, I really like the beach in the ocean. I think more. And I said, yeah, me too. There's something just so calming, yet also so challenging about being in this space. Like it doesn't feel natural to me, but I do enjoy it. And I'm very curious about it. And as soon as we said that, a little sailboat bobbed across our vision. And I thought, do people live in those? Like we're living in an RV and a lot of people do it. Like it's a pretty common thing. I mean, it might not be common for what you think, but we have had lots of friends and even my parents who had lived in an RV for quite some time. So it was like, we can do this. But like, do people live in sailboats? And as a person who grew up in like landlocked Alberta, Canada, that's not really a thing that we really experience. When I tell people now, you know, I grew up in Canada, they're like, oh, the sailing up there is so great. Is that how you learned? And I'm like, no, I learned like last year and I'm continuing to learn. No, there was no sailing up in Canada where I'm from. Like that's, I know, I know that we have sailing at the Glenmore Reservoir, but I think that's as like epic as it gets. There are no oceans there. So Kevin and I started researching how we're going to live on this boat. Is it possible? Can we afford it? And the answer was quickly like, it's possible, but we cannot afford this. There's no way. So at the time we were actually looking at getting a motorboat or rather I should say a trawler and trawlers start around $900,000. Like, I mean, they start way less, but if you want to like cross oceans and do pretty serious stuff and not get super seasick because your boat is just too small and also have three dogs and, and, and you're looking at like a good solid 900,000 US dollars. And so I just started making up this manifesto. I created an entire manifesting manifesto about what I wanted in life, how I wanted to get to this space, what I wanted to experience when I was in this space, how we were going to get this trawler. We even went as far as naming the boat that we didn't have so that we could start to imagine ourselves on the boat. So I want to read to you my positive affirmation that ended up getting us our boat. This is not something that I've really shared, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because I'm being called to. And it kind of will, uh, when you start to, I want to actually set the stage here. When you start to manifest something that I've noticed over the last two years of really manifesting, like being a manifesting generator and understanding that there's so much power in this. Uh, It's been very important for me to be really solid within myself and be very true to myself and understand that in order for me to manifest, in order for me to have my best life and experience things I didn't think was possible, I need to know and believe in myself and know that I am possible in that space. So that's why when I read you my positive affirmation that ended up getting us our sailboat seamlessly, and I'll get to why it ended up being a sailboat a little bit later. You'll hear me talk about myself first and being confident in myself. So here goes. My body is capable. I am powerful, feminine, and unstoppable. I do good in the world. I let love in. I am wholly healed and fully functioning. I forgive myself. Having money is a tool. Having money is a responsibility. Money comes to me all the time. I am grateful for the two million US dollars we will make in 2018 so that we can buy our trawler seamlessly and travel about the world together. I see Kevin and I holding hands in our bathing suits, jumping off the side of the boat while coconut barks running back and forth on the deck. The water is cool and the sun is hot. We laugh covered in salty water. We're relaxed, having set aside a very comfortable amount of money, knowing that we can dedicate ourselves to exploring the world together with seamlessly. I feel joy. I feel freedom. I experience spontaneity. Our friends and family visit often. I feel connection with them and planet Earth. I am so grateful for this money that we will make. This money is mine. It's on its way now. The world is out to support and reward me. I am living and will continue to live my most awesome, relaxed life. I'm excited about life. Everything is available to me. I am grateful of everything. 
really powerful, right? At least for me, even reading this now, every morning I would get up and I would look in the mirror and I would read this out to myself. In fact, I have most of it memorized. And then I started recording myself doing it so that I could play it multiple times throughout the day. Like when I had just a couple minutes, I would play the recording. Anytime I could find a mirror, I would look at the mirror and listen to my voice. And if not, I would just listen to it. And I really started to believe it. I really started to want this and to just know that I could just have it like it was available to me. It was just waiting for me. So we didn't get exactly, you know, it's funny with manifesting. It's not always something that happens instantly. Of course not. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's not all what we thought we wanted, but it's more. And so we were manifesting or wanting to manifest quite a lot of money so that we could afford the boat and maintain the boat. And that didn't totally happen and didn't need to happen because as we were shopping for quote unquote, the dream boat, Kevin found our now sailboat online and was like, Leanne, I think I've found our boat. I was like, um, yeah, that's a sailboat. That's a catamaran. We were not, we're not looking for a catamaran, babe. Get with it. He's like, no, but this is something we could actually afford. It has everything we're looking for and it's a lot cheaper and it is a sailboat, but I think we should go look at it. So we went to look at the sailboat and I don't know, she just spoke to us. She just felt good. And you remember like, I've never been on a boat, but I'd never been on a catamaran before. Well, that's not totally true. (laughs) We chartered a catamaran for one day, eight hours in Mexico for eight hours, a Lagoon 45. So it's 45 feet long. I guess they call it a Lagoon 450. Same thing. Um, So 45 feet long in Mexico a couple months before just to see like, how do we feel? Kevin was seasick the whole time. I loved it. I was on that trampoline at the front, just like bobbing back and forth and it was raining and I was, oh my gosh, sign me up. I need to do this. And so that was my first time on a sailing catamaran. And so when we came on seamlessly, she had a different name at that time. I don't know. I didn't know anything what I was looking at. I didn't know what the engines did. or I mean, I kind of knew what the engines did, duh. But like, I didn't know what the generator, like where the generator was, how that worked, where the intake was. Like in the RV, it was air intake. But in the boat, I didn't even think that it would have to be water intake to cool it down. Like none of this. I was looking at machines and things and people were referring to bilges. And I was like, what's a bilge? I thought a bilge was a sink. And so every time people said the bilges can sometimes smell, but they're really clean. I was like, the sinks can sometimes smell, but they're clean. I don't understand. Okay. A bilge is like the bottom of the boat, like inside the boat. If you lift up the floorboards, that's the bilge. Okay. So people were speaking a completely different language and we're looking at this boat and our agent and the other, you know, the seller's agent were saying all these words. And I'm like, I have no idea. I just know that I feel really good in here and I want this. (laughs) I want this. And I remember knowing fully and completely, and you're probably this human too. There are things you just know, you just know that you need to do. Even if it's like just a split moment of like, I know I need to do this. Oh my God, I'm terrified. I'm not doing this. But for that split second before you doubt yourself, it's like, yes, that is a hard yes. That's how I felt when we walked on the boat. I like, I saw our life. I saw exactly what I had put in my manifesto, like down to the T, jumping off the side, coconut barking. I saw it on that boat. I need this boat. Today's episode continues after this short message from one of my sponsors who make the show possible, plus give you some great deals on my favorite things. ButcherBox features 100% grass-fed and finished heritage-bred pork and organic free-range chicken. ButcherBox sends you high-quality, health-promoting meats directly to your door on dry ice and free shipping anywhere in the lower 48. ButcherBox makes committing to quality protein sources less expensive and more available to everyone. Their prices are hard to beat, and it's challenging to find a higher quality product anywhere in the USA. I've been using ButcherBox for years and love the convenience of a package showing up just when I need it, and their ground sausage is an absolute dream. 
ButcherBox has put together a super special deal for all listeners of the show. Order your first box and get a special gift plus an additional $20 off. Now, this special gift is so epic that I can't even mention it on the episode today. So you'll have to go to butcherbox.com slash keto diet to check out the deal plus get your $20 off your very first order. Again, that's butcherbox.com slash keto diet to check out the deal plus get $20 off your first order. If you're unsure of the link, simply check out today's show notes for all the details. So we went back to the agent's office and we signed papers saying, yes, we are interested in buying this catamaran. And I remember thinking like, is this my life? Like this is happening. I have no sailing experience. I don't even know what a bilge is. As far as I know, it's a sink. I don't know what any of those ropes do. I don't even know how to get on the boat. I don't, I, how, how? I don't even, I haven't even really been, no, I have not been out on the ocean on a boat other than a cruise ship that just totally does not count. How do I even have a right to do this? Like, who am I to want to accomplish this? Like, what am I even thinking? But it was like an exciting, I mean, people do it so I can totally do it too. And I remember signing that piece of paper like, holy moly, this is happening. And they're going to say yes. And we're moving on to this boat. This boat is ours. And sure enough, yes, the previous owners were phenomenal and so kind and generous and amazing. And we ended up getting the boat frantically moving out of the RV and frantically, oh my gosh, we moved out of the RV. We drove it to Calgary, Alberta, and then packed up all our stuff in a U-Haul and went all the way to Florida. That is a long trip, my friends. I can't even remember how many miles or kilometers. I don't even know. It was long. We did it in five days. I ate a lot of jube jubes, my favorite Canadian candy, to just like get it done and stay up totally sugar high. And we moved onto this boat and our insurance company wouldn't even let us touch the lines that attached the boat to the dock. We weren't even allowed to touch that because we had zero experience, like none. So we hired a captain to take us down to another dock that was a lot cheaper so we could get some boat work done. And Kevin was sick the whole time (laughs) traveling down. It was like a three hour trip. Kevin was sick. I was studying for our ASA classes that we were starting the week after because we needed to hire a captain to teach us how to do stuff. (laughs) So we get to the dock. um, The captain pulls us up and does all the lines because we're not allowed to touch them and leaves us on this boat. And like, there are all these weird noises and it's moving and bobbing about and we're like, what the heck? So we lived on the boat for a couple of days, got everything settled. And our first training captain came on and she showed us a bunch of really cool drills and things. But on the second day, after heading down to this bay to practice, I broke down. Like I, we docked a couple times and I was terrified of hitting the boat on things. Cause like, this is every penny that we have guys. Like we put everything into this, everything. And when you're, when you're moving, I mean, this can be applied to anything, but I'm going to apply it to the boat stuff first and then I'm going to make it apply to anyone. We've put every dollar that we have into something that we don't know how it works. We don't know how to move it. We don't know how to stop it. We don't know how to start it. We don't know how to maintain it. We don't know how to do anything with it. All of the money and the, the powerlessness that comes up with that. And the desperation that you experience, like, oh my God, the terror, the pure terror. And I think that was the, one of the first times that I realized how much energy I put into my connection with money. Like, dude, if we crash this boat and it, we lose everything, we will have nothing. Not thinking, you know, now a year and a half later is like, I now surrender. Like if we lose the boat, the only thing that I care about is whether or not Kevin and I are safe and the puppies, but mostly Kevin and I like, I'm okay. Check. Kevin's okay. Check. Good. Okay. Let's check the rest. You know, coconut's okay. Check. Lexi's okay. Check. Pebbles is okay. Check. Okay, cool. We're good. We don't need anything else. But in that moment of docking the boat for the very first time and the, and the captain kept saying, oh, do it again, do it again, do it again. On the third time, I just started crying. I was just so overwhelmed and terrified. Like, what What did we do? Oh, God. Was this a mistake? I don't know how to do this. I don't. 
I don't know how to do this. <laughs> and I think that there are so many times in our life where we can experience this. It's like, what did I do? Who am I to think that I can accomplish this? And I've put everything into this. You know, like I'm sure there are many listening who have put money into businesses and money into other people. And it might not even be money. It might be all of your energy or all of your time to not know how it's going to pan out. Sounds a lot like parenting, (laughs) you know, to put something into something so powerful, time, energy, and money and not know how it's going to go, but be very hopeful as well that something beautiful is going to come from it. So after we learned with that sailing captain, we still didn't have sign off to move the boat ourselves. So here we are living on this boat, working on this boat, trying to learn the boat um, while not being able to operate it because we don't know how. So we hired another captain. We went out again, this time seven days, same area, more drills, more drills, more drills, more drills, less crying, exhaustion, though, like such deep exhaustion. And at that point, we had started following a bunch of people on YouTube and they were doing it. You know, they had the three day course with ASA. They got in their boat. They sailed away. They went to the Bahamas for six months. Oh, my gosh, life is great. We're learning all the things we haven't screwed up once. It's so awesome. And that can be really hard to watch. Again, feeling like, well, how come they were able to just like no experience, get their boat, you know, then sail all over, go to the Bahamas, come back, do boat work, then leave again and like live in their best life. And we're six months in and our insurance company won't even let us move the boat. Like, what are we doing here? So after that second captain, we were able to start doing drills ourselves, but we were terrified. So we didn't. So then we hired that same captain again to take us over to the Bahamas and like learn how to cross and, you know, more um, navigational stuff, which was so great. How to maneuver the boat a little bit, mostly sailing long distances. So we did that feeling quite comfortable. But, you know, come January of 2019, I was not ready to like go across by ourselves and experience the Bahamas. I was not ready. I remember January 17th was the day that we were going to take off by ourselves and go to the Bahamas by ourselves without a captain and do it all ourselves. I was terrified. In fact, when we left the dock up until that point, all of the um, trainers and all of our Captains had said, you know, like, Leanne, you're a woman, so you're more meticulous with docking and things. So in any tight situation, you're going to take over. Yeah. I now know that, like, that's just not a thing. And so, and that's okay to know what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. And I think that's such a powerful thing that all of us need to learn is, like, what do I really excel at? Like, what am I just naturally good at that makes me feel good? And what am I really not great at that I don't really care to improve on? And like, I just need to be somewhat good at it to get by. So I like doing laundry. Like, I don't love it. I know it's essential. I do it. I'm not that great at it. I'm sure there are other humans that do laundry so much better than me. But like, that just don't care enough. Today's episode continues after this short message from one of my sponsors who make the show possible, plus give you some great deals on my favorite things. I don't think I can do the ketogenic diet because I love wine. This is the statement that so, so, so many women have told me, and my answer is always, but have you heard of Dry Farm Wines? They're the only wine club that offers zero sugar wines. This means that you can have a glass or two, maybe three, and it won't affect your ketones. All of their wines are sourced from small, sustainable farms. They're natural, organic, low in alcohol, have zero additives, zero carbs. And when you order by going to healthfulpursuit.com slash wine, you're going to get an extra bottle of wine for a penny in your first order. Again, that's healthfulpursuit.com slash wine. And if you're unsure of the link, simply check out today's show notes for all the details. It's really important that we understand that there are things that we just excel at, that we are good at, that feels good. And then there are things that we just do because we have to or things we say no to because we just don't want to do. I mean, you can't really say no to laundry. So you do it. That's a great example. If there's something wrong with Kevin and we're on the boat and we need to get from point A to B and there's something severely wrong, 
I will get the boat to a- from A to B. I can't promise there won't be dings in it. I can't promise I won't break some stuff, but I will get us there. So I think when we left for the Bahamas the first time by ourselves and we were leaving the dock, so it was my responsibility at that time because I hadn't realized all this stuff about the fact that I'm just not good at certain things. I was so terrified and so nervous because I knew I was not ready to go and I was very much resisting it and I wasn't listening. And I kept telling Kevin, like, I'm not okay with this. I'm not okay with this. We can't do this. We can't do this. And he's like, we can do this. You're okay with it. We're doing it. So I'm at the helm and I pull us away from the dock and instantly I just freeze. I totally blacked out. I didn't see anything, didn't hear anything. I can't even tell you what happened. All I remember is Kevin being like, Leanne, move. And he pushed me out of the way to take over because I completely blacked out. I have no idea what happened. So he gets us out. We get out into the open ocean and we're crossing over the Bahamas. We checked in. We did all that all good. We avoided storms. We, you know, over the next two months, we learned so much in those first two months in the Bahamas. It was incredible. And slowly but surely, we were learning and started to see that we were picking up on different things and how powerful that was. But because I was so resistant of it, and because I was so in my head about all these things, I did not appreciate the fact that we had manifested our dream. Like, it has happened. We are on our sailing yacht in the Bahamas, living our best life. And I was so stressed out and so worried about losing it all. This deep guttural fear of the fact that I have this beautiful life, something bad is going to happen, and it's all going to be taken away from me. Yeah, that's a pretty gross belief. Months later, after discovering that this was very much at this point, I didn't really know what was happening. I just knew that I was very unhappy and eating a lot and not in a good space. Months later, I came up with a program, uh, the self-expression workshop. You can find out more by going to healthfulpursuit.com slash workshop one. I'll include the link in the show notes over at ketodietpodcast.com. Just look for episode 201. In that workshop, just talking about the fact that there are these core beliefs that are stopping you from living your best life. And when you understand how to become self-aware, You understand how to take care of yourself properly because now you're aware of yourself and now you can express yourself in a way that feels good. These first couple of months being on our own and sailing and me just being so miserable and not soaking up the experience, my fears of everything being taken away from me was stopping me from actually appreciating and being grateful for the experience I had right in that moment. And I still default to this behavior. In fact, I did it yesterday when we had had such a great dinner with friends and the whole way home, I was so stressed about the fact that we had paid more money than we should have for the meal. And when I say should have, like I get into these spaces where I have such a lack of abundance and I don't even want to call it greed. It's just like this deep, utter feeling of like not having enough specifically to do with money that when we go to restaurants I will choose the cheapest item on the menu and my meal will come to ten dollars and Kevin's drinking cider and eating and you know then paying for other people's drinks and then all of a sudden you know I've spent ten dollars on my meal and our bill is up to a hundred dollars and I freak out But like, I don't take a moment to be like, okay, we never go for dinner with friends. This is a special time. It's really important to Kevin. And oh my gosh, we're staying at this beautiful marina and we just walked here and holy moly, we're in this gorgeous Caribbean place. How is this my life right now? We stop ourselves from feeling those things because our fears keep us stuck in this space of like, it's not okay. It's not enough. Push, push, push. Don't be grateful. And that's another piece to this and understanding since we moved onto the boat is that gratitude is such a powerful practice and something that if I'm not being grateful multiple times in the day, then my gratitude practice is suffering. Like if I'm defaulting to negative, defaulting to negative, then I know that my gratitude practice is suffering and I need to amp up feelings of gratitude in order to actually bust through my fears. I hope you're really enjoying today's episode. I'd love to see where you're listening from. Snap a pic and tag me at Healthful Pursuit or leave a review for the show on your favorite podcast player. It helps me out tremendously. Okay, back to the good stuff. 
So we're in the Bahamas. We've been there for a couple months and life is quote unquote good, but I'm super unhappy and stressed out all the time. And then uh, we have a bunch of boat issues. We end up having to go back to Florida. Those boat issues turn into more boat issues that turn into more boat issues and boat issues and so many boat issues. So many issues. And every issue is thousands of dollars. And I was like really worn down and my life force had been completely taken away by myself. I did this like I completely allowed it to happen. And like, again, themes of powerlessness, you know, like to just have this space that at one point I thought was so was going to like change my life. Oh my gosh, just like YouTube, I'm going to be on the boat and life's going to be good. I'm going to spearfish every day and I'm going to like meditate and do yoga every morning. It's going to be so great. And then it like wasn't that (laughs) social media. uh. There was a period of time for about a month where Kevin and I were seriously considering selling the boat. In fact, yeah, like we wanted to sell the boat. We wanted to sell the boat, not get another boat and be done with boat life. And then one morning I just woke up and was like, what the actual what? Okay. No, (laughs) we manifested this amazingness. I don't know if we'll be able to do this again. Like this was like the perfect storm of beautifulness that just happened that we were able to make this happen. And I've put too much into this and I have too many dreams on that. Like, why did we? No, no, this is not okay. I did not choose this. No, my fear of losing everything is stopping me from experiencing the life I have right now. Like right now, it's right here. I'm just not allowing myself to experience it. How messed up is that? Like, where in your life do you feel like Like if you look outside of your life right now, maybe somebody else, you know, think of you being somebody else and look as that somebody else on your life. What do they think about your life? Okay, not what you think about it, but like take a moment to observe your life from outside of yourself. What are you seeing? I bet you there are some pretty awesome things that from the exterior, it looks pretty sweet. But all your fears and your past and your shadow beliefs and a lot of things that we talk about in my self-expression workshop are stopping you from fully experiencing your life right now as it is right now and being grateful for what you have right now. By have, I don't mean physical things. I mean, just like in the space, it could be physical things, emotional things, connections, everything that allows you to experience your life. So we decided to keep the boat and we decided for the summer that I was going to work very, very, very hard. Hard's the wrong word. I was going to dedicate myself to myself and do things that felt good. I was going to say no to basically everything. I wasn't going to stress about work. The books had just launched uh, the Keto Diet Cookbook and Keto for Women. I decided not to go on tour at that point and I just wanted to have a good summer, completely carefree, not caring about anything. It was amazing. I cracked myself open. I reconnected to my spiritual nature and I mean we all have it. I assessed my mental health, my emotional health. I saw my physical health for what it was, set it aside really and just did stuff that felt good. I danced until four o'clock in the morning a lot, (laughs) a lot. I took up salsa dancing. I went to crystal courses. I did yoga. I bought some sound bowls for sound healing. And I just totally immersed myself in myself. And then I started having these dreams of how beautiful it was going to be to be on the ocean, being more my authentic self. And that's where we are right now. It's been a crazy seven months of just self-discovery and surrendering. And just recently, we started moving the boat again. We were docked for quite some time, just like as I was doing all this work and I went on a book tour and all the things that you've heard about probably on the podcast. And if you follow me on Instagram at Healthful Pursuit, maybe you've picked up on some of that stuff there. So we've decided we're going to start moving the boat. We're going to go back to the Bahamas. And we were like, man, we need a teacher. (laughs) And I talked about this on IGTV. You can check me out at Healthful Pursuit, where I talked about 
overcoming fears and just like when to ask for help, that it's okay to ask for help. There's nothing wrong with this and that we need to stop comparing ourselves to other people thinking that they have it all together and how dare we ask for help when those people didn't need it. You have no idea what people are going through, what they need or don't need, what they've already asked for, what they aren't doing that you want to do. You just don't know. So we asked a friend to help us. He said yes. And for the last three days, um, we were learning all about how to move our boat in very small spaces with a lot of wind and a lot of current. And this is like terrifying for me because I feel like our boat is on ice and we are just slippy sliding everywhere and we have no control. It's very interesting if you've been on a boat before, which I hadn't. It's a very foreign environment, water. Like in my mind, it runs so quickly and you have zero control. But what I'm learning is in order to have control, you have to relinquish that control and you have to completely surrender to Mother Nature to just sit in stillness, not in gear of any engines or sails or anything. Just sit in neutral in the water and watch how it moves you and then adjust lightly. Surrender again. Watch how it moves you. Adjust lightly. Oh, really hard. And like there's so many places in my life, you know, experiencing this space of surrender. There's so many places in my life where I don't surrender, where I cannot relinquish control. And I have to work on that. But I really feel like much of what I'm learning, because I'd like to think I'm sort of good with my words, that I can relate it to perhaps how you're feeling in your life, whether you live in a sailboat or not. <laughs> So that you can start to learn from my experiences. Yeah, I live on a sailboat and maybe that's never your dream. But I got to tell you that living on this boat and choosing, choosing this life after we got it and then I decided I didn't want it. But then I realized that fear was manipulating everything to do with why I didn't want it anymore. That all these experiences can relate back to, quote unquote, a non-nomadic life. And so for the three days during the training, just being in that surrender and just witnessing Mother Nature and adjusting lightly has been a really powerful experience for me. And just seeing myself as a confident person who does understand things and is so connected and does have foresight um, and can surrender is huge, huge for me. And the fact that I now have the understanding of how powerful Mother Nature is also huge for me. Um, And that's what inspired my most recent workshop, uh, the Empowered Woman Workshop, where I talk about how to understand our cycles, whether you're ovulating or not, menstruating or not. You could be in menopause. You could be in postmenopause. You could have amenorrhea, endometriosis, uh, PCOS, or just have a regular period or be on hormonal birth control. I really don't care. If you are a woman or identify as one, you go through cycles and It's important to understand how those cycles impact how we show up in the world. And so I know that maybe the best time to have a sailing captain on to teach us drills is days 10 to 20 of my cycle, but sure as heck, not day 20 to like five, like no. So we planned around that or I did and knew when it would be best and just understanding that and harnessing that. So if you want to learn more about how to become a more empowered woman, you can go to healthfulpursuit.com slash workshop too. I'll also include that in the show notes over at ketodietpodcast.com. Just look for episode 201 on that page and you can check it out. So here we are, my friends. I am terrified hopeful, excited, curious. One of the reasons we called seamlessly, seamlessly, is because (laughs) no matter how much I stress or am fearful of things, everything always comes together so seamlessly, just so beautifully. And one thing leads to the next thing that leads to the next thing. And you never truly know if that, you know, Otherwise, crappy thing that happened to you isn't going to turn out to be just so beautiful. Like us having all the boat issues made us stay in one place long enough for us to develop such strong connections with people and a community, a sense of community that we really have never had, you know. So had we just, you know, gone balls to the wall and just go, 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 we never would have had that connection. And 
understanding my core desired feelings are adventure, spontaneity, and connection. And adventure, spontaneity, I have down. But that connection is really important to me. And had we not had those boat issues, we never would have made those connections. And that's such a powerful thing. So understanding what you want out of life. What are the things, you know, if you have a dream of living on a sailboat, what do you want to feel when you live on that sailboat? Well, for me, it's adventure and spontaneity. Okay. Does it create connection? Well, a little bit. Connection with mother nature? Yes. Connection with my husband? Yes. My dogs? Yes. Other people? Not so much. So how can we create that? And so with every dream, try to understand what what is behind that. And I find you start to notice every dream has a very common thing. You're going for the same things. You're going for wanting to feel the same no matter if you want a shiny red sports car or to get a different job. It all goes down to these handful of things and feelings that you want to feel. And that work is from uh, Danielle Laporte through the Desire Map. I will include a link in the show notes on Desire Map, something that I have been practicing for a long time. And those words have never changed for me. I think I discovered my core desired feelings in 2012. Spontaneity, connection, adventure, still the same. It hasn't changed. And how powerful is that? So... Yeah, we chatted about a couple things. I mainly want to highlight just the links and such. My two workshops, self-expression workshop. You can find that at healthfulpursuit.com slash workshop one. Then the empowered woman workshop, healthfulpursuit.com slash workshop two. Desire map, all of these things will be in the show notes over at ketodietpodcast.com. Just look for episode 201. And if you get all of them together, well, I wish desire map too, but if you get my first and second workshops together, you bundle them together, you can use the coupon code special offer at checkout to get a pretty epic discount when you get them both together. So yeah, that's what I've been up to lately. I don't really know where this is going to take us, but I feel very excited about what's next. I'm definitely in a different space. I feel like I'm in a different space. Even as I record this, I'm sitting in our forward cabin and it it's at the very front of the ship. So it's pretty bobby here. My brain is feeling like very... um just like loosey goosey. Awesome. I love it up here. It kind of like rocks you. Now, if you get seasick, this is probably like the worst place to go in the boat, but I just love the bobbity bob, bob, bobbity bob. And if you listen really closely, I bet you you could hear the waves crashing up against the hall. And how cool is that? So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. I hope you got something out of my story today. I really, really do feel like my goal in life and the reason why I'm here is to just live my best life, to be as authentic and vulnerable as possible, to share things that (laughs) not a lot of people would want to share on the internet or to other people. To, I don't know, encourage you to live your best life and do the things and ask the hard questions. And I'm, I feel so blessed to be in the space to be able to share um, what I've gone through, what I'm going through, how I'm feeling. And it would be a total, complete lie if I didn't say I was terrified. But really, at the end of the day, what's the worst that can happen? I want to be sitting on my deathbed, preferably laying down, actually. Just like looking up at the people that love me or maybe I'm alone. I'm okay with that too. And just thinking back on my life and being like, whoa, (laughs) I have lived it up. I said yes to things that scared me. I said no to things that drug me down. I didn't care about how big or small my body was because at the end of the day, I was capable enough to do the things that I dreamt about doing and just did them. I was terrified at times. I was excited at times. I was thinking I was a little bit crazy most of the time, but I made it through and here I am and I don't want to regret anything. And so anytime I have that call, you know, like when we got on seamlessly and I was like, oh my gosh, this is our boat. That split second before we start doubting ourselves. That's where the power is. Yeah. So next time you're presented with an idea or um, a change, what's your initial reaction to that before your brain and logic takes over? Like, you couldn't possibly do this. It's also known as ego. So yeah, next up on the podcast on Sunday, November 3rd, we have episode 202. My friend Madeline is taking over the show to talk about toxins. 
Oh man, girl, this is a great episode. She chats about why you should care about the toxins in your day to day and its effect on your ability to stay in fat burning mode, how toxins and weight plateaus are related, the daily exposure we have to toxins and how common they are in daily life signs of toxicity, and why this relates to hormone balancing. And then Wednesday, November 6th, we have episode 203, where I have taken over the podcast and I'm chatting all about what to do when you're hungry all of the time. What do we do with that? How do we approach this? So thank you so much for hanging out with me, friends. I had a blast. I hope that you learned something and I will see you in a couple of days. Okay, bye. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor should it be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.